All right, hello everyone. Version 2.0 has its balance patch here. This was the first major balance patch and it basically gave us an eye into how the devs are balancing the game. There's some stuff I like and some stuff I don't like. So we're gonna get into it. Subscribe if you enjoy and let's go. Try Stringer, increase the size of terrain ink by falling spray and spray droplets. So this was kind of the main problem with Tri Trigger. It didn't paint very well. It was supposed to be kind of a flexible thing in between something like Explo and Charger, but it didn't do enough well. Being able to buff the paint means it'll get better whale output. It'll be better paint for itself and its team. It'll be more flexible. It's basically what it's needed. I think this will be very big for it. Will it be enough for Bo to be an actual, like really good competitive weapon? I don't know, but it's a step in the right direction and I like it. Uh, more importantly though, Wiper got the biggest main weapon increase change here with the horizontal slashes. This is not the charge slash, this is the normal swings being increased by 27% and the same kind of spray droplet thing. So why does this matter? So one thing I've praised Wiper for is its mobility, like it being able to like swing like this and move really fast is really useful. But one thing that you'll notice about these is like, I can't flick and swim through these. Like this is slow and inconsistent. So what Wipers do is they charge slash and then they move, they do like this. And while that's good, it's not as fast. They gave Wiper not only better paint, like, hey, this is way better paint. It's gonna farm the hell out of Ultra Stand. But on top of that, you can do this and then move. Like, you can now move with this instead of a charge slash, which is significantly faster. Like, this is an absolutely huge movement option. This basically gives this thing shooter mobility, arguably better than shooter mobility, because it also strafes, like, the fastest strafe speed in the game. Like, if run speed stacked on this thing, it would literally have the highest mobility out of, like, anything besides ink brush, which is absolutely ridiculous. Important takeaway. This is a massive wiper buff. It's going to get stamped a lot more, which is useful because wiper kind of plays like a mini Tetra. It's going to paint way better, and it's going to most importantly move way faster. Huge buffs, definitely the biggest winner of the patch. Angle shooter. Initial velocity is about 20% faster, and this also means it's about 20% more range. Cool. I mean, this is a nice buff. It is better than nothing. This wasn't really a problem it had. It already kind of outranged E-Leader, so it needed buffs to things like damage or ink cost or making the trail more effective. None of those things happen. This is still the worst sub in the entire game. I'm sorry, Angle Shooter. They will care about you eventually. At least you got something. Back to the relevant changes. Zipcaster got a very big buff. This was Zipcaster's main problem, is the main weapon would kill your ink tank. And this especially helps Splatana Stamper. Stamper is a problem with its main use of the Zipcaster being the horizontal slash. Like, this is really good poke that'll force people to move. The problem is this also, like, look at my ink tank. This gets new. It'll help with other weapons like Octobrush, obviously. Because right now, what uh, Spider-Man weapons like to do is they basically just absolutely spam the crap out of the arm to, like, distract people with armor. And then if you stop paying attention to it, boom, it kills you. So it's kind of used it as a distraction. And you can still do that, but now you can actually poke while you're behind people. I don't know if it's enough for Zip to be really good. Like, it might need a little bit more. But this was like the main thing Zipcaster needed to get a change to, and it got one. I'm really, really happy about it. That ink cost was way too high, and this will help every Zipcaster weapon, but will especially help out with Stamper since it does a lot more poke than quick kills. So Ink Vacuum got a change I wanted them to do with it, but they did it in a less cool way. My idea is that the more ink you absorb, the more damage you would get, and that would increase up to 220. Instead, you don't have to work for it, you just get 220. And we actually see a new thing in this patch notes here, which is the devs are actually putting an explanation for a few of the changes they do. Not all of them, but for some of them, we're actually learning what they're caring about. Like, why did this change happen? This is why. It's for a big bubbler, Rainmaker Shield, and Squid Roll Insert. First of all, this isn't what the special needs. It kind of needs a way to be able to change out of the absorption mode because it's a bit of a downside. But one important thing to note is this shot hits twice. Like you see how it hits them and then it can explode. Both of those are having increased damage, which means Vacuum's doing an extra 200 damage to things like Bubble Shield, to things like Crab Tank. Basically, it makes it better versus HP specials. Outside of that, you won't be able to parry it. So if you wanted to stay in the same spot the Ink Vac explosion was gonna blow up in, you would just parry it with the Squid Roll because it was fairly easy and you didn't have to move. Now that isn't an option. You have to vacate the space the shot is in, which is important because it's not really that good at killing. It travels very slowly. 
I like this buff. I think Vacuum needs a little bit more. I understand the devs being hesitant to do a little bit more though. So that's whatever. I'm fine with it. Reef Slaughter got a very similar change. 180 to 220. A little bit extra damage to Big Bubbler if you accidentally forget to just run it over. A bit more damage to Rainmaker Shield. And most importantly, you can't parry it. It's a nice buff. Reef Slider really needed a little bit more than this, but again, I feel like it's the same hesitancy. They don't want to overbuff it, which I can understand. Though here, Reef Slider is like easily a lot worse than something like Ink Fact. So I really wish they did a little bit more with it, but I like that they're at least looking at it right now. Finally is the missile nerf that should have happened three years ago. Yeah. Uh, you can now no longer charge missile after firing them. And I'll show you the main place this hurt. Nintendo has stated before that they want to change playstyles where you spam subs and specials at a distance without moving forward. And that's why I really like this missile nerf. It's not only a nerf to their spam ability, but think about it. If you're like a reflux and you farm early missile and use it here, those missiles have to travel longer to get there to their target. And during this time, you can't farm it at all. So you're basically useless back here you would just be painting your own side of the map. You actually are somewhat incentivized to use missiles closer to the targets you're firing on, which means it's harder to lock four missile on people. You have to choose between missling four people and getting them less often, or missling less people but being closer and more able to capitalize on them if you want the higher output. We're actually giving the special some form of drawback. Beautiful. I think missile needs a rework still. The design of it is still trash, but at the very least, the main spammable playstyle is nerfed here. Last time was just points for special. It didn't change the playstyle, it just tried to make it worse. This actually influences the playstyle of missile users, which is going to be more healthy. It's still a problem, but oh my lord, this change should have happened three years ago. Things would have been much more bearable. But at least we're getting it now. Arrow spray, 10 cheaper. This weapon's pretty irrelevant. I don't care. Ends up 85. If they make tack better, this is nice. It might help it in Rainmaker. Splattershot Pro, this weapon's still irrelevant, but whatever. Cool. Jet Sculpture, this weapon's also still irrelevant. High two angle shooter weapons. Uh, H3, this is still a terrible kit. Whatever, it's cheaper, but it's still like, it has no synergy with the main weapon. And then the relevant change is E Leader. Got an extra 10 points for special to Wavebreaker. E Leader is kind of held back by the current meta of Crab and Missile Spam, but considering Missiles is getting nerfed, E Leader also needs some form of subsequent tone back nerf. And I think 10 points for special is fairly fair. So, yeah, that's fine. There is a small potential nerf to Booyah Bomb. Basically, in Splatoon 2, Booyah had a limit on how fast you could mash with it, and in 3, they took it away for some reason. And now, they might be going back on it because this is an actual patch note that they did. Okay, they're overhauling Tricolor is the final thing I want to wrap up on before we get the analysis overall, which is now both teams can play it. I know some people will be upset at this, but I really like it because personally, Tricolor just needs to be a fun mode, and I really like defending, and I don't want to have to gamble on a 1-3 to three chance to play defense. So letting people play the mode on the side they want, I think, is a good change. All right, so overall thoughts. What we can tell here mainly is a direction. I've talked about this before, how this patch will be an indicator as to how the devs want to balance the game. And now we know they do not want to nerf things. They are going to be very, very hesitant to nerf things. Missiles was the main nerf, and that's something that's been really good for three years across two games. On top of that, many of these buffs were to things that would indirectly deal with the things that are good. Like, HP specials are very good right now. Uh, themselves uh, will probably be able to do this fight, and look at that! It's another triple correct uh, composition! I, apparently 9, I jinxed it. <laughs> so they buffed damage of several of the specials. They buffed Stringers and Splatanas, which do very good object damage. So these changes are clearly trying to, hey, look at this option over here. This is really good against meta thing. We're gonna make it a little bit better. Why don't you try it? This is a good change overall. Splatoon 2 over nerfed things way too much. It also failed to buff a lot of things that needed to get buffed. And so overall, I am very happy with the better direction. However, I do think they're going a little bit too far on the inability to nerf things. Splash had a ridiculous usage rate. And so did Crab. Top level tournaments in Japan had triple Crab in some games on both teams. I think that's a bit too much. What I personally would have liked to see if they were this hesitant was, okay, let's give Crab a slap on the wrist. Like, 
one second less duration or 50 less HP or even like splash 210p duly 210p like some minor thing as well would have been good because personally I just do not see crab getting pushed out of the meta it's just way too good right now and while the counters were buffed I don't think it's enough however it's definitely going to be easier to deal with it and I would rather they do this approach than over nerf and kill crab it's at least a pretty fun special to be good right now as a whole I like the direction the devs are doing I think overall they are balancing a lot smarter, and I'm happy with that. I am looking forward to the next patch in the middle of chill season, and let me know what you guys think. I will see you all next time.